Hey guys, I'm Allison. Welcome back to my channel, Natural Tasty Chef. Today I want to talk about how to eat out while on a candida diet. If you're currently on a candida diet, you already know firsthand how isolating it can be. It's hard to eat out and stick to the diet. So today I want to give you three tips so that you can go back to enjoying your friends and family, going out to restaurants occasionally, going back to family functions, and just feeling like a normal person again. If you haven't done so already, I encourage you to go back and watch my Finding Balance While on a Candida Diet, and I'll link that video in the description box below. I talked briefly about the 80-20 philosophy, and that's something that I want you to keep in mind while eating out. So let's jump right in. So tip number one is to avoid the rolls and try ordering a veggie platter instead. Now, I know it's really hard because when warm bread comes out, it smells so good and it's just, um, it's really hard to resist sometimes, but if you really want to stick to the plan, try ordering a veggie platter. Maybe it comes with hummus or a guacamole or um, a side salad or a vegetable-based soup of some sort. Or maybe you guys go to a restaurant that doesn't even serve rolls or bread first, and in that case, you don't have to worry about it at all. So tip number two is to bring your own salad dressing. Salad dressing is one of those sneaky things where it seems like it's probably fine, but usually salad dressing is made up with poor quality oil, poor quality vinegar, usually it has sugar in it, um, poor quality salt, and oftentimes dairy. A lot of people don't realize that, but a lot of salad dressings actually have cheese in them. So for those reasons, it's better to just bring your own. I have a blog post that I'll link below with tons of recreations of great salad dressings. Everything from Caesar to ranch to your basic vinaigrette, and they're really quick and easy to make. Uh, you can make a big batch and keep it in the fridge. And then when you go out, I like to put it in a single serving thing. So this is just an empty um, spice jar. So this is just a spice jar that I peeled the wrapper off and I cleaned it out and these are perfect because uh, they won't spill and then you can pour it in this and keep it in your purse and then when you're ready to eat your salad you just have your healthy salad dressing ready to drizzle on. So you can use this for either your starter salad or if you choose a salad as your main course. Now starter salads are usually pretty basic with just lettuce and normally like cucumber tomato. So you would just ask for the salad dressing on the side. If you were ordering a salad as the main course, I would ask them to hold the salad dressing as well as any croutons if there are any on that salad and then also hold the cheese. And if you do all that and you use your own dressing, you're probably gonna be in pretty good shape. So tip number three is let's discuss entrees. So for entrees, there are some simple tips that I would suggest. And that would be to first stick to lean protein and veggies if you can. And how that would look in a restaurant is like a grilled salmon with asparagus on the side or say chicken breast with broccoli or um, steak tips with grilled vegetables, something like that. Another great option actually would be a burger, hold the bun, and even like sweet potato fries. Now, obviously sweet potato fries are gonna be made in oil that's not the greatest, but this would be kind of like the 20%. So, or a lot of restaurants even now give you the option for a gluten-free bun. I would suggest avoiding anything like a grain-based dish or like a cream or cheese base. So I would avoid things like mac and cheese, um, obviously spaghetti, uh, chowder, or like an eggplant parmesan. I would just avoid anything like that. For me personally, I find that Greek restaurants or Thai restaurants are um, very easy to order at. So like at a Greek restaurant, you could do like a Greek salad and then just hold the feta, but everything else is usually pretty good on that. Or you could choose a kebab. So kebabs usually have like rice on the side, which is naturally gluten-free. So you have the rice and the vegetables and you could choose a protein like chicken or lamb or, um, or steak tips or something like that. At Thai restaurants, they usually have lots of curries or soups or vegetable-based dishes that are actually made with coconut milk and not with dairy. So that's a really great option too. And Thai restaurants usually give you the option now to have either white rice or brown rice. So I would always suggest choosing brown. Um, but both are gluten-free. Things have gotten a lot easier over the years because there are so many gluten-free options now at restaurants and there are vegan options too. I, I, I try to steer clear of vegan options because most are basically soy-based. So I would really try to stick to like a lean protein again and vegetables 
And if you're gonna do a grain, keep it to like a brown rice is preferable, but a rice would be great, or if there's a quinoa dish, that would be great too. So let's talk about a little bonus um, tip here, and that's for cocktail. I get questions about this all the time, and I totally get it. You know, I was in my early 30s when I started going through this, and I remember also feeling like, what, what do you do when you're out with a group of people? Maybe you wanna have a drink. Obviously, it's recommended to completely avoid alcohol while you're on a candida diet. That being said, if you are going to have a drink, there are some better options. I would first recommend that you avoid wine, whether it's white or red, um, margaritas, and then also beer. So those are the ones I would say definitely uh, avoid. If you are going to splurge, and again, I'm not recommending that you do, but if you are, there are some better options. First would be either a vodka, with club soda or uh, seltzer water and a splash of lime juice or vodka with cranberry juice or like a gin and tonic water or a gin and club soda. Vodka and gin are either made from gluten-based grains like, like wheat, rye, or barley, or some brands are made with potato. So the brands that are made from gluten-based grains may have traces of gluten in them, the, obviously the one made from potato has no gluten, so those would be the better brands to use. So just do a little research um, at your bar, maybe your uh, waitress will know which ones are potato based. And then I will link below a blog post where uh, brands that I know of, I have them all in there. So again, I'm not saying go drink, but that's just a question I get all the time. and I. Can totally relate because I always wondered that too. Those are my tips. I really hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like the video. If you have any comments or if you have any great tips for eating out, I'd love to hear them too. Please leave them in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do, especially if you are interested in more candida diet tips. I wish you um, good health and happiness. See you next time.